Okay, for some reason I just realized it did not record any of that. So, short version, we went to... Uh, uh, we met up with Kryl, and Kryl had us read up on the... Uh, how to read up on the history of Charlene and the... I'm gonna call them the Council. Sorry, were you waiting long? I wanted to make sure I borrowed at least a few promising volumes. Alphano and Carl should be along shortly. I was late in similar fashion. As far as I could see, no titles of in the Archon stacks mention the final day specifically. So we have no choice but to start with the tangible, relevant tomes. Tangentially relevant tomes, even if, if they are even that. At present, the plan is to skim through as quickly as we dare and share discoveries as we make them. It would have been nice to invite everyone to the estate. Plenty of comfortable places to read and plenty and ready supply of hot tea. Oh, I always... I, well, I was always quite fond of reading outside. But this isn't about the little pleasures, is it? You miss your home. It's been... Difficult. After our arrival, we managed to speak with one of the family servants and ask how things were. It seems our dear father has instructed the staff that even if Alphino and I were to return to Charlene, we are not allowed to be across. We are not allowed to cross the threshold. That sucks. A harsh measure indeed. I hope that our efforts to understand his position, and that of the form, will perhaps lead to a reconciliation. We'll mend this rift one day, I'm certain of it. And what of you, Graha? Have you been to visit your family, or do they not live here in the city? Ah, well, my situation is somewhat complicated. I was raised in Charlian, yes, but I was born rather further away. In the southern reaches of Ilsebard, in fact. For generations, my people have dwelled in Corvos, the coastal region opposite the island of Thavnir. The, Alleg the Alleghens founded a city in, their fer in that fertile land, and by ship brought it in the subjugation, subjugated tribes of the Mukita service slavers. Oh. Of course, the massive earthquakes of the Fourth Humble Calamity brought the end to the Empire's reign, and when the Fifth Calamity froze the seas solid, many of the tribes still living in Krovos braved the journey back to Eorzea. My ancestors, however, chose to remain, that they might prevent the remnants of Alligan technology from being misused. Isn't Krovos under Garlian rule? For the past 50 years? Jeez. Some semblance of local culture remains, as in the most for case as that, as is the case for most pro imperial provinces. But Garli Garlamal renamed the region Locus Amonis. Amonis. When I was a boy, a nearby town came under the jurisdiction of an illustrious imperial family, the noble house of Darnus. Darnus. House Darnus demonstrated a singular interest in Allegan civilization, and so my tribe was forced to consider a plan of action. For some time already, voices had been raised in favor of abandoning our ancient customs. After, after all, the Allegan Eye no longer passed to our eldest children as reliably as it once had. 
fear of discovery eventually tipped the scales, and the decision was made to barriertize to the knowledge and traditions of Alag. As the last child born with the Alagan eye, I was given over to the custody of friends and the students of Baldessian, who, who had me register as a Charlene citizen. I never even considered. Forgive me. It was an unkind question. Even Thancret was taken in by Archon Louis Schwa, was he not? Stories of adopted waves and its rescued orphans are more common among Charlians than you might think. Yet, regardless of our origins, we have we are all provided an equal opportunity to learn, and the sufficient precipity it was with sufficient precipity we outsiders can even earn the vaulted title of Archon. Tis exactly why I have such love for this country, and why I wish to remain a why I wish it to remain a nation which its citizens can be proud of. Here, here, another good reason to get to the bottom of the form of stubbornness, aside from the trifling matter of our impending doom. Excuse us while we try to make some headway into these books, Sapphire. More company should be arriving any minute, moment now. I'm a little bummed. I missed a, I missed the books, so, but I can always go back and read those later, I guess. We've returned with our selections. Although I must say, the pickings were quite swell, slim indeed. Mistress Crow has already flicked through every history book devoted to disasters, and more than a few which barely made mention of them. As such, we will be looking into research papers on the Umbral Calamities, as well as articles written by prominent form members. Perhaps their knowledge of the final days comes from an unexpected source. Speaking of which, might I ask you a few questions related to the final days? I'm the only one here who didn't witness the events of Amarant firsthand, and I fear I may be overlooking critical details. My thanks. Now, where to begin? First things first, what kind of phenomenon did the ancients encounter as the final days drew nigh? Okay. Um, I believe Heidelin and Zodiac were summoned after the final days had arrived. Quite deliberately, in fact. If we're speaking of phenomena caused by the final days, the chaos of creation magics run rampant is what first comes to mind. Fear and desperation manifest in terrible, tangible fashion. Meteors rain from the sky, fire erupting from the ground, indescribable abominations prowling the streets. That's what I thought they were talking about were the abominations, but I guess... Okay. That more or less aligns with my understanding. If only the, cert the arts of creation had survived until the present day, we might have had something substantial to analyze. To the best of our knowledge, however, those techniques were not preserved or passed on. Ishtola surmises that the closest known magic is that of summoning rituals prog progmulligated by the Asians. Was there aught else to note which herald the approach of final days? I think you may be screaming, as I recall, this is more gradual spread. The Amorites spoke of a keening sound. 
Wow, they expect you to fully remember what happened. When we we never did hear this on ourselves, they're thrust as we were in the midst of the madness. So the ground was crying out, you say, to be considered the harbinger of doom. It must have been quite distinctive, and probably quite loud. I'll have to speak with one of the Nomenos, Nomenons, Mammoths, and after any book, and ask after any books mention such a sound. Last but not least, would you Descri would you describe how the ancients sought to quell this unprecedented calamity? What definitive action did they take? Technically, it was both, but t but technically, they summoned Zodiac first, then Hydaelyn. Dolomit from the sky. Did they? I'm probably wrong. Okay. Yes, with with Elidibus serving as his heart, so many gave themselves in sacrifice to bring him into being. We don't know how exactly we don't know exactly how Zodiac brought salvation to the star, only that his god by his godlike will were the laws of nature set aright. Then, once the balance was redressed, the ancients offered up a further sacrifice to heal the ravages of the final days. Lives sprout anew, and with these fledgling souls, they tended to render to Zodiac a trade that would have allowed them to resurrect the shades of loved ones absorbed by the primal, or might have had Venot and her followers not manifested their opposing opposition in the form of Heidelin. Thank you both for the detail for the de detailed review. I feel much more confident now about my understandings of the events. With all that freshly in my mind, it does make me wonder what the Telephori truly mean when they speak of bringing back the final days. We've seen what they're doing in those towers of theirs. Is forcing, is forcing people to summon primals kind of a catalyst? Are they attempting to mirror the conditions that cause an unstable, crea unstable cre creation magics? Or are they simply using the final days as a figure of speech, a convenient metaphor for the scale of destruction they plan to unleash? <sighs> But this is all just pointless conjecture at this stage. Let us return our attention to the form, shall we? We should keep an eye out for Ishtola, but tis time we begin studying these research papers. I'm the last one, am I? Well, such extended search of the Archon stack produced one or two possible useful books, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. If you recall, Orianje learned f of the source's reflection from the Garen Oracles. For its potential to cause panic and confusion, that tome was deemed apocrypha and sealed away in the great Gubal Library. It is even less likely that knowledge of the unsundered of the unsundered world, not to mention the horrors of the final days, would left would be left sitting on a shelf for any curious scholar to find. It stands to reason then that my colleagues, be they archons or counselors, should perforce be largely ignorant of the subject, yet when you confront front it Master Fortunate with knowledge of the Telephori and their machinations, he scoffed at the suggestion that they pose a threat. He seemed adamant that the form would know if the final days were upon us, which only supports the conclusion that whatever privileged wisdom is guiding the form's behavior, it 
is being kept secret from the rest of the nation. Not that I mean to excuse myself from reading duty. Whether they contain mention of the final days or no, these books could yet hold something of value. You weren't thinking of leaving, were you? There's plenty of work for everyone. Oh dear, you look exhausted, but what about your studies? Were you able to find any books on the subject I mentioned? Then the day was well spent. Should you wish to read them again, a mammoth at the reference desk will point you in the right direction. For the moment though, I suggest you take a well-deserved rest. We will be occupied with our research for quite some time. for a tea break sapphire? I know I am. Honestly, my neck and shoulders are going to calcify if I don't stretch my legs and walk around for a bit. You know the last stand down in the harbor, don't you? Come and meet me near the tables outside. I'll treat you to their coffee. It's quite good. Okay, random... Snow? I think the last time I came through here, well, when I originally came through here, I think it was also nighttime. I was busy as ever, I see. How very Charlene that no other gourmet cafe has sprung up to compete for customers. Actually, this crowd gives me an idea. Before we pe place an order, why don't we ask a few questions and gauge the mood of the city? I'm interested to hear what the average citizen has to say about the telephory. We might even learn something new. Worth a try, don't you think? What? What? What, what is it? Can a man not enjoy a moment of privacy and respite? If you're looking to share a table, then I respectfully request that you look elsewhere. You misunderstand, sir. We're simply wondering if you knew of the Telephory. These enemies of peace have promised an end to the world, to the, all we hold dear in. Wait, you're the House Lavier girl, aren't you? And this man with you is obviously a foreigner. Hmm. I've I heard you were disowned for helping outsiders indulge in barbaric whims, and here you are giving truth to a rumor. I'll thank you to leave me be. I've not said to say the likes of you again. Well, I must apologize. It was foolish of me to expect an ounce of civility from the enlightened one. Wow. So because of this, it's going to make... Wow. Yes, I don't believe we've had the pleasure. Excuse the interruption. 
but we were hoping you might share your thoughts on the Telephone and their unconscionable plans. My goodness, if it isn't the young Mrs. Levier. My apologies, but I work in the offices of the Forum. If word reached Master Fortunate that I was helping you... I see. Sorry to have bothered you. Welcome, sir. What can I offer you today? Wait, is that Mistress Alizé I see over there? My word, how long has it been? Far too long. Meet Nickin, the, own, the owner of The Last Stand. I used to frequent his cafe on occasion in between lessons at the stadium. It seems like an age ago now. I remember hearing you and Master Alphano had set sail for Eorzea, but then you never came back. Lately, there's been gossip about your father disowning the pair of you. Everything alright at home? <laughs> no, it has not. It's complicated. And I hadn't expected complete strangers to be so familiar with our situation, quite frankly. Everyone has an opinion, it seems. Well, it is, House Levier. No matter how discreet Master Fortunate may have been, news of your family's doings never stay secret for long. Things being what they are, what brings you back to the city now, of all times? We have questions, and only Charlene has the answers. Tell me, Master Dickon, have you heard anything about the apocalypse called the Final Days? Wait, like end of like the end of the world? Nothing like that, I'm afraid. And that's what you're here to find out. Information on this apocalypse. Yes, whatever we can learn. Unfortunately, your patrons appear to be unwilling to speak to me. I wish there was more I could do to help. Maybe there is. You're a visitor of Charlene, aren't you? Yeah. Then few will know your face. You should be able to pass off. Then we should be able to pass you off as a server, none the wiser. We just finished preparing a few orders. Strike up some friendly conversation while you're sitting. While you're setting their fruit down, you might just get the answers you're looking for. Not a bad idea. I hate to ask, but what do you think? Yeah, sure. That's the spirit. Pay attention now. I'll explain each where each of these dishes need to go. The tea set is for the chatty group by the water's edge. I'm actually going to write this down because I don't want to mess this up. I want info. Tea sets for the water edge. Omelets for one of our regulars. I'm named Giselle. Gizla. Mikita Gentleman ordered an oven baker. Okay. Got it. Oh my, oh, my lovely tea set. Lovely, thank you. The Talafahu? I'm sorry, I've never heard of them, or their final days. My friends and I are somewhat uninformed when it comes to current, current events. Now, if you wanted to hear about the ritual arcane practices of the Sixth Astral Era, common or stoic, then I'd be happy to talk your ear off. Okay. Okay, 
she gets the uh, omelet. Ah, finally. Two, four, six, eight. Let's dig in. No time to waste. The what? The what? The Telephoria? Ah, yes. Yeah, so we were seeing the name in the latest Gazette. And that and some grand claim about the end of days. Same old nonsense, less warmongering. When will these fools grow tired of spilling each other's blood? Best to stay out of it, I say. The forum made the right choice, and I fully support our decision to remain neutral. Huh, interesting. At last, the oven baked lobster is mine. You have no idea how long I've scrimped and saved and suffered to afford this heavenly dish. Final days? This is the first I've heard of it. Although, that would explain why my friend has been rushed off his feet. It's been, bus it's been a busy time to be a gleaner. Gleaner? Oh, you don't know what a gleaner is? They're collectors of sorts. Travel the world procuring things that we haven't got here in Charlene. Priceless books, unusual living life specimens, and so forth. So, named after the folks who trail after the trail after the reapers in the field, picking up every grain which is missed. I, by all accounts, gleaning is the most meticulous and demanding profession. If these self make good on their audacious threats, then many un many uncatalogued rarities will be lost forever. Why else would the gleaners be buzzing, and buzzing about it in such a frenzy? Watch the harbor, you'll see what I mean. They're loading, car they're carting loads in from the docks. It's never been this hectic before, not like this. Okay, so they do know what's going on, they're just not saying. Well, obviously. So they're gonna hoard all the knowledge for themselves, and then once whatever this disaster is that happens, they're like, oh, we are fine, we know how to stop it, we are the heroes trouble with the customers? Were you able to talk to anybody? Or what were they talking about? Interesting, they seemed unaware of the final days, aside from whatever vague news the gazettes are printing. Even Dickon had nothing to offer, and he's the best source of gossip in the city. If the form does have secret knowledge, then they've done an impressive job of ensuring no one whispers whispers it in the wrong ear. In case and thank you for playing the part so well, here's a cup of coffee, I promised. Let's enjoy our drink somewhere else, shall we? <laughs> Maybe behind the peristyle, away from the gossips and their wagging tails. So this should do nicely. Out of the wind and out of sight. When our father disowned us, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in, that I began to feel the weight of what it meant. Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlien? Grahas said that the Forum was determined to keep us in the dark, 
and that Father's venomous performance was part of that strategy, to keep us at arm's length. Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive content. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice. So all I could do was fume silently. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been, how being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. If I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. They must be ferrying goods to Labyrinthos. A vast complex beneath the island. Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world. Well, that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and going more than usual? Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. And gleaners answer to the forum. If the appearance of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the forum is planning. Tell the others what we've learned about the cleaners. Go on, go on ahead to Nomenon, and I'll join you in a moment. Master Dickon will want his cups back. Welcome back. Been for a walk and cleared your head, have you? Not exactly. We did some impromptu investigating and turned up information on the gleaners. Makes sense. The gleaners take their requests directly from institutions and bureaucrats, but as you say, they ultimately answer to the form. A sudden significant increase in gleaner traffic and in cargo 
it certainly gives the impression of an overarching, overarching plan being put in motion. Let's see what theory we could build from the facts. As Ishola observed er earlier, Nominon's archives appear to contain no information concerning the final days. Coupled with what Sapphire and Alize learned about the last learned at the last stand, we can reasonably sure that we can reasonably sure that most Charlene's know nothing of the particular of that particular period in ancient history. Yet my father and his colleagues are not familiar with the final days, but also somehow but are also somehow certain that the destruction being perpetrated by the Telephori is wholly unlikely these apocryphal apoc apocalyptic events. Moreover The form claims to be so occupied by a duty of such pressing importance that they saw fit to unanimously deny Aorcius' request for aid. Now the Gleaners, official agents of state, have been mobilized on an unprecedented scale. I don't think... I don't think it is stretch... I don't think it a stretch to conclude about that the Gleaners' recent activities are in service to the form's secretive ends. In which case, our next course of action seems obvious. We visit Labyrinthos and assess the situation for ourselves. If we were lucky, and if we're lucky, the Gleaners will be far more receptive to our questions. Oh, I would hate to spoil the surprise. Oh my god. As for myself, there are a few more subjects I should like to research. I may join you later, but feel free to leave behind your brought books and be on your way. I will see to it that each of is returned to its proper place. That would be a great help. Thank you, Graha. I love how she calls Graha. Let's head down the stairs over there. I'll show you the way. I'll show you where the entrance is. Labyrinthos is not too far from here, but you may find the path a bit disorienting. I'll take lead. So stay close. And off we go. We run, try and keep up.
the Rostra, not Fardell. Here we are, through this door and down the stairs. Do you remember to attune the shard back there? You didn't remember to attune the shard back there. It will make your life much easier if you need to come back in a hurry. Otherwise, we should keep moving. of securing permission for our group's descent. Right, everyone off to the left, down we go. Deep beneath the scholar's city shines a false sun within a fabricated sky. In any age exist those who consider the floor an extension of their bookshelves, and this false architect surely belonged to that special breed. If the stack grows too high, start a new one. If no room remains, then make more rooms. A simple solution at first, and then bit by bit, a profound transformation. Knowledge, buried beneath knowledge, a growing, creeping labyrinth from which there is no escape. This literally sounds like Fan Daniel. Like, I'm pretty sure this is Fan Daniel. So they essentially built this in a crater. Not what you expected. I must admit, the artifice is very convincing. But I assure you that we are beneath Charlian itself. The breeze you feel, the flowing waters you hear, all created by the hand of man. The island is volcanic, you see. And once upon a time, this great hollow must have been a reservoir for magma. It was discovered some 400 years ago, at which point it was repurposed as a storage facility for scrolls and samples and such. Renovations have continued, with nigh on no interruption to this day, with the lower levels still undergoing expansion. Aren't those people gleaners? I judging by their dress. They are said to work alone as a rule, but would seem that rule is being enthusiastically broken today. It may be as you suspected, that they are engaged in a task apart from the norm. Let's spread out and get some answers then. Did you call to me just now? No. How odd. I must be a bit dizzy from the descent. I I'll be fine, I'm sure. Let's get to work, shall we?
Ah, yes. Come to an location, help three people, and then they help us. You want to know what I'm doing? Hauling books and ore and fauna. If it needs hauling, I haul it. Every decade or so, they take stock and labyrinths, so, you know? So, sort of a tidy up of invent tidy up the inventory. Never seen an operation like this before, though. They just did one a few summers ago, even. Then, with no warning at all, this mess gets dropped into our laps. Orders from on high. Damned if I know the reason. Could be that they, they're changing the layout, preparing for the next big expansion. Let me think, let me think. The Raya Seed should be item 1058, Cumin Seeds 59, Snurble Snur Berry 1060, or are they 1061? Uh, my head feels like it's stuffed with Mako grass. Why more loads to take, why more loads to take out than carry in? Why do all this work? Why all do this at once and risk mixing it up? What if someone mistakes the Cartho carrots for the Garibanyan carrots? What then? Jeez. I know that name. Wait a minute. Is that... It is! Okay. I've heard the name before, and I recognize this character. So this, so we meet him in this expansion. And he continues on to Talal. You here to help or give me more headaches? Because you don't have the look of a gleaner, and I'm in no mood for idle chatter. One of my colleagues was so exhausted he took a tumble and crashed into a pile of crates. Now I have to pack the marmots running loose. There's a chunk monger in the area too. Perfect. Any luck? What tells do the gleaners have to tell? So this grand notion began operation began without warning. And for every item they bring in, they're sending more inventory somewhere else. Hmm. That would explain the haggard faces I've been seeing. We were right, the form is definitely up to something, and they're turning labyrinths upside down in the process. Before I do that... I'm gonna chat with the junk monster. Oh, here it is. I'm like, there was some stuff I wanted to get rid of.
can use I'm gonna hold off on that one because that one's for Dark Knight. Yeah, this could technically go away. We would do well to learn more of what specifically the gleaners are being tasked to do, as well as who is tasked them to do it. If you're game, I have an idea. Didn't one of the gleaners question you saying something about escape marmots? Perhaps if you were able to capture said creatures, he might be inclined toward a more friendly and enlightening conversation. In the meantime, I will turn my charms on upon this cleaner here. We can compare notes afterwards. Happy hunting. I do like my swords. You wish to help me find the marmots? I have nothing suitable to pay you for your services, but if you've but if you're offering under the goodness of heart, I'm more welcome than assistance. Name's Urnville, friend. Specialist in the collection of live specimens. That said, the capture of these... Nagshian... Nagshian marmots is a trial I've no desire to repeat. Glizzle... Glizzled mice, they are called. For a mercy, there is no other marmot species on this on this tier at present, so there should be no there should be no mistaking our little fugitives. If you happen to catch any, stuff them in a sec, gently, of course. Where to begin? You wonder. I've not seen any scampering out here, so you'll need to widen our search into the surrounding forest. Be on your guard. There are beasts out there that won't hesitate to prey upon. Marmot or you. I'll search the trees in the west. The eastern part of the forest is all yours. Good luck. Alright, let's see how hard some of these things can hit. Like a troll. I kind of figured. I did kind of figure I didn't have a line of sight on it.
barely have you ready to sack when the little mouse scampers off into the underbrush. Oh, they're not even giving me a number. Okay. how large this place was. I think when I originally came here, I was still doing uh, Realm of Horror. That reminds me... What do I feel like it's up there? Found it. Ah, look at that. And I wasn't even looking for an aether current.
Exactly where I'm going, I just gotta get to it. <gasps> hey, fighting all two trolls at once, not fun. We're back in the olden days where it took a lot more to take stuff out. Just because I want that Aether current too. Ah, okay. I'm like, I don't have my compass. No, it's right there. Alright, take two. Let's get this mouse. More pre more prepared for its speed this time. You succeeded in closing. This. That was the only one we needed. Jeez. Uh, where is? Okay. So I think after we talk to Aaron Vell. So it's just a, ideally, random, not necessarily random, but it is, it is a starting location. No, where's my Mountain Dew Mount? There we go. You know what? I love my Chocobo, but I want my Baja Blast Mount. How did you fare? I tracked down three tracked down three of the pack, which leaves one unaccounted for. Here you go. Hmm. 
There is an odd marmot out. Wait here a moment while I put our friends in the holding cage. Thankfully, the marmots seem to be unharmed. They've held up well in isolation, but it's too much... It's much too soon to release them back into the habitat. It's a good thing we were able to cap recapture them so swiftly. And you have my thanks. Huh, that's for the form to decide. They are the guiding authority behind Labyrinthos, after all. And this job was but one small part of the greater inventory of theirs. Suitable for consumption and ease, easy to breed, those were the two conditions I was given for, st for the stock I was instructed to procure. I don't know what the form has planned for these creatures, but at the very least, I doubt they'll be served for dinner today or tomorrow. There you are. Is this the gleaner you mentioned? The one who was looking for the lost marmots? Interesting company you keep, friend. Who are you folk, anyway? I am Crowell of the student of the students of Baldessian. The others here are my associates. Truth be told, the form's decision of late have not sat entirely well with us. That is why we made the decision that is why we made the descent into Labyrinthos. We hope that by seeing these seeing those decisions put in the action we might more fully understand their reasoning. Wise and practical. Never hurts to try and gain a broader perspective, does it? Anyway, duty calls. Other animals to capture and enclosures to empty. Once again, I'm sorry that I cannot offer you more for your services. I was like, what is happening? It's nighttime. Did you learn anything new from your friend there? So we've confirmed that the order for this ambitious operation didn't keep in, uh, did indeed come directly from the form. However, the gleaners have not been informed of its purpose. I'd say that fits with everything we've learned thus far. We also discovered when the operation was begun, the form contacted the gleaners' guild ship and put their people to this great work for some four days after the Telefori made their chilling declaration. As seasoned travelers, the gleaners keep abreast of the news from every corner of the world out of necessity. Thus, I'm inclined to trust that their calendar of events is accurate. Although it gives the distinct impression that this undertaking was a sudden unexpected development, yet I find it hard to believe that such a comprehensive restructuring of Labyrinthos and its archives could have been planned in so brief a window. Nay, this plan is, was long in the making. They were but awaiting the right time to put it into effect. And the Telefor's declaration was what set it all in motion? It seems likely, but let us not leap to conclusions just yet. For the moment, I suggest we conduct a wider investigation of Labyrinthos. The more facilities we visit, the more pieces of the puzzle we stand to, to find. In that case, how about we head to the Arche Archeon? We can reach the lower... Wow, what's wrong? 
I'm fine, truly. The sudden descent has left me a bit of a headache, that's all. Nothing that will stop me from soldiering on. Let's be about it, then. At least allow me to take the lead. I'm fairly certain I remember the way to Archeon. We follow the path east, through the forest where you were chasing after the mouse, or marmot, was it? Anyway, tis the trolls you need to watch out for. You know what? We're just gonna do it like this then. That's a little annoying. But I guess I need at least two mounts. Not if that's the case. Where's the other one? So it'll be one of two giant birds. Oh, another etherite. Behold, the Archeon. As Nomenon serves as Charlene's liter literary archive, so does the structure house the city's wealth of material data. The architect too, architecture, too, is similar. This building you see is merely the upper entrance, an access point to the vaults carved into the cliff sides itself. Within those vast rooms are stored countless samples and specimens as well as a detailed record of each of that detailed record which describes them. In a matter of speaking, the Archeon contains the physical history of Charlene's unwavering dedication to the accum accumulation of knowledge. Well, we won't learn anything of value standing around here. Let us proceed to the main building and speak with the custodian.
I'll get to it later. Greetings, we here at we here we are here to pursue the Archeon's vaults. Pursue? You are clearly not gleaners then. Might I ask your affiliation? We believe we belong to the students of Baldessian, but is that relevant? I was given to believe that the vaults, those open to the public at least, were open to the public. Ordinarily, yes, that would be the case. At present, however, access is restricted. Only persons directly involved with the reorganization efforts are permitted to enter. Not us, then. I suppose we had better move along to another facility. This building has a lift which connects to the middle tier, yes? Might we at least make use of that? No. Yeah, I figured. That service has also been suspended, I'm afraid. For the time being, priority has been given... has been given over to the conveyance of inventory. What? So, this is as far as we can go? Alice, say, don't push. I apologize for the inconvenience. Please come again after our restructuring operation has concluded. By that time, we'll, it'll be too late, and we're so close to getting answers. We need to rethink our approach. Let us step outside for a moment, shall we? Alice is so brash. Jeez. Students of Baldessian. Humph. Redden and pass, as we have no other leads. I should like to pursue this one. F I should like this pr ah, pursue this one further. But I doubt that our stone-faced custodian will be swayed by heartfelt pleas. We must seek another means to access the lower level. Aaronville, you coming in handy right here? It is likely that the people in this area are involved with in the restructuring in one way or another. If we were to integrate ourselves, we they might allow us to accompany them on the lift. Let us ask around. Surely someone is in need of a few strong backs to lighten their load? Taking a lift? Oh no, we're just students. They won't let us onto the into the Archeon, even though we found. Actually, we have no idea what it is we found. There's no record of such a creature anywhere. But it was wandering around tranquility, so we thought to donate it to the vaults. Honest little squeak, don't you think? Anyway, I suppose we'll have to take care of it until the Archeon is open again. Okay, that's a no. Who else needs help? What's that? Take you down in the lift with me? Sorry. But not a chance. I've been up and down all day, and I only have I only now have a f found a spare moment to rest. I did see a gleaner fellow heading out the gate there, though, shouldering a large package, engaged in some manner of task. Maybe he'll head down below after he's done with it, whatever it is he's doing. really do work independently of each other.
There he is. Do I jump? Quiet, you'll frighten it away. Ah, it's you again. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm in the middle of another task. The cloud kin I need to capture is close, very close. You wish to help me with this too? You spend your time in unusual ways, my friend. Still, two hunters are generally better than one. Very well. The, the canal here is common gathering spot for birds of all kinds, but the one I'm after today is the hornbill. Its feathers are green, its distinct cry, its cry is a distinct cough. Single it out and shoot it with a sleeping dart. The effects are short-lived, so lie in wait until the river, by the riverbank until to claim our quarry. Be sure to hit the right one. Ah, yes, this game. Okay, let's try again. Dang it. Dang it. There we go. That's still the wrong bird. So then I'm probably not looking in the right location. Sure. Nicely done. Let me trust this one up and I'll make my way over to you. There you are. Any new revelations? So you met with that gleaner again, this time to capture a hornbill. I understand catching and bringing in creatures from the outside, but what's the point of chasing after ones already here? Oh, it's a simple thing, really. 
Occasionally, we remove specimens no longer needed for study. Or those we've had difficulty raising. But we can't simply turn them loose. Safely returning such creatures to their native habitats is another facet of a cleaner's duties. But not in this case, I'm afraid. I've been asked to bring the bird below. The restricted section in the lower levels of Labyrinthos. Open only to a select few researchers hand-picked by the Forum. The projects down there are the subject of rumor and hearsay. Forbidden magics. Advanced technologies that can never be allowed to fall into outside hands. Even Archons are not privy to the truth. Those who are, the researchers involved in this secretive work, are not permitted to walk freely in the city, and are instead required to live in isolated quarters. What could a facility subject to such strict security protocols possibly need with a hornbill? An... an experiment? Possibly. I wasn't afforded an explanation. But judging by the requisition list given to me and my colleagues, I doubt it's for any kind of advanced research. I'd be more inclined to believe we were making preparations to migrate to the south. Mericidio, or thereabouts. What? Why would you say that? Much of the flora and fauna we were asked to procure could serve as reliable sources of sustenance. They're comparatively hardy species, too. Able to endure harsh climates. And among them are specimens known to be effective in improving soil quality and purifying water. When you put it that way, migration does sound like a reasonable assumption. That's all it is, though. An assumption. Through our tasks, we gleaners glimpse only bits and pieces of the forum's plans. Our prime concern is that our requisitions be they living or otherwise, are properly preserved for the knowledge of future generations. Now, I really must be going. I regret that I cannot reward you as you deserve. Perhaps you might reward us after a fashion then. It is imperative that we reach the lower levels. And seeing as you are already set to descend with your assigned cargo, mayhap we could accompany you as your assistants. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Once the animals have been prepared for transport, we send them down separately via the lift. I will, of course, follow after to make my report, but I can hardly pass you off as porters when there's nothing left to carry. Indeed. Pray forget I said anything. How do you feel about climbing? If you've strength and the courage to brave it, then there is another way down. This path leads to the 33rd facet, a mine shaft excavated during one of our expansions of Labyrinthos. While I cannot guarantee that the passage is safe to traverse, it should provide access to the meteor circuit below. I never even knew such a place existed. Thank you. This is the perfect solution. You're quite welcome. But consider yourselves warned. If the going proves too treacherous, you'd do well to turn back. I bid you good day. Well, turning back is hardly an option, not when we've come this far. Let's go and take a look at this mine shaft.
Must be the entrance to the mine shaft. It's just faint, but I hear something moving within creatures home there by the researchers, you think? Well, slavery beasts aside, we will need to watch our footing. We should tighten our straps before we continue. Subscribe. The videos will be coming out every Tuesday around 8 a.m. And of course, be good to yourself, be good to others, and stay true to you. Later.